Hey, good day, hey. everyone. Oh, good day. Hey. You, you were yawning. You're back. You shouldn't was, be yawning. I was sitting so. here for a week now. <laughs> I was here since Tuesday, and you didn't tell the line. I'm just still here. Why do you ever go home? You should be going home. This, this place is my home. Oh, okay. Anyways, welcome back. Happy Tuesday again, guys. Today is February 23. 23rd. February 23, 2021. 23rd. There you go. But, anyways. February 23rd. I got the date right now, okay? Okay, okay. Last week, I got a little bit of correction, so this time I gotta make sure that I got the date right. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm looking at you. Yeah. And the, and the date, too. Where's That's the date? true. Little here. The date's right here. 23rd. 23rd. We have another episode for you, and today we're back, or I guess for me, I'm back to my alphabetical theme. Yeah. Uh, last time we stopped at letter E, and then we got the Mardi Gras. Now we're doing letter F. F for February. For February. For February. Oh, yeah. that's cool. But things uh, like the things that we have for the stuff of the day um, is not related <laughs> for to February. Okay. Letter F though, related to letter F. Yep. All righty. Let's start observance. Let's start with the first observance of the day. Curling is cool day. You guys heard of a uh, of the sports of a sport named curling? We're yeah, I have curling. a sport called curling. I watch how long it takes my uh, mom to curl her hair. That's no, sports. That's, that's not what curling is. That's not what curling is. It no. takes forever to curl her hair. And it's not even sport. <laughs> it is a sport. It it's is a sport. And you put money on the line, <laughs> put time, make it a time, and it's, it will become a sport. It's probably you can more make of, a sport. That's true. Unless, well, no, you need you need a like a group or organization or a oh, committee. Yeah. Something to recognize. It. Yeah, because yeah, uh -huh. you, you can just like do an activity and claim it as a sport, you know. But anyways, uh, today though we're gonna be talking about actually we're talking about two sports today. This is the first one. Curling is good. Uh, curling. Cool. Curling is cool. That's it's good. cool. Yeah, <laughs> it's great though. It's great. Curling is one of the world's oldest team sports. Believe it or not, you know. Uh, heavy granite stones, usually weighing 44 pounds, are slid down a rectangular sheet of ice towards the target. Um, let me uh, increase the size of my notes. <laughs> the targets are made of four concentric circles, uh, and stones are stopped closer to the center of a target. Uh, of a target are given higher scores. Uh, basically, what they do is, you know guys see that uh, stone right there right uh, once going to kind of not toss but like push it on yes, the ice yes, yes. and then you're gonna have like uh, at least two people um, if I'm not mistaken or more maybe uh, they will brush off the ice in front of it uh, so it would either move faster, faster and then or slower so it's kind of like it's kind of like bowling but like, you know how, like, Minus the, uh, the brushing of the, the floor. So yeah. the pins, right? You know how the pins are standing upright, right? Mm -hmm. The target itself is on the floor, it's uh, marked on the floor. So it's like yeah. one circle. When it, when, it, when it says concentric, right? It means there's one circle, right? Around that circle is another circle. Mm -hmm. Around that circle is another circle. It's kind of like a target sign, a sore target sign. Oh, yeah, okay. Yes. Well, it's not, it's not like a bowling then, because when you say bowling, you just basically hit the target. Right. But for true. them, they had to make so the. So it's more like a dart. It's more like dart. Right, sign. there yes. you go. More you like dart. Accuracy and position. Yeah. So when you're uh, cleaning the ice, shaving off the ice, up in, you want like the right amount of ice. You want it to go faster, slow. You want to mm. slow it down and have it stop in the middle, the bullseye. Yes. Yes. Your, your goal is to uh, uh, keep the. The, the granite stones as yes. closer to the center as possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, without touching it, obviously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't push it with the stick or the brush thing that you guys no, are no. seeing in the picture now. So, once it's moved, right? It's the first movement when you toss it, right? That's the only time you can touch it. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't touch it at any part of the time it's moving. The yep. thing you can touch is the ice. And just like we said, it's a team sport. It is team, yes. So, uh, there's more than two people or more than one person that's playing it. Um, curling began in Scotland in the 1500s. Wow, that is uh, pretty long ago. It's like almost five, like half a century. Right. No, not half a century. Like a millennia. Millennia. Oh yeah. Millennia is a thousand years. So centuries is a hundred. Yeah. Five hundred years ago. More like five centuries. Yeah, five centuries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
uh, where it was played on ponds and lakes uh, during winter. Well, that makes sense. Some play, some people play or still play it outside in similar settings. Mm -hmm. um, the earliest curling stones date to 1511, and the first written records of the sport uh, date back or dates back to 1540. Yeah. Then in 1600s. Stones with handles were introduced, just like what you guys see right now. So it'd be like if you have a better grip and better grip of it and better tossing the mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's really hard like we hold like a stone, right? Yeah. You have to hold the tire stone and just push it on. So right. With the, with the little handle, right? You just place it on the ice and just move it forward. And you can use one hand. Yeah, you can use one hand. Yeah. For a stone, you have to be one, you have to be strong enough to carry a 44 pound. Yes. And grand stone. Alright. Next observance is Play Tennis Day. All right, I told you guys we have another uh, second sport coming. Second sport. I could talk to you guys uh, more things about tennis because I do play tennis before. Yes. Uh, I wish I could still play tennis right now, but I'm pretty familiar with this sport. You can always play tennis. You just need to, right. you know, be back in your fighting shape. No, because when you no, it's it's not just about that. But when you play tennis, you have to play with someone. Oh, that's you know, true. unless you have a wall. You know, but and then also right now, um, a lot of tennis courts are uh, are not Closure. that open to the public. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. or, uh, you know, I have a private uh, tennis court in my mansion. You can come over, you want to play? Sure. And afterwards, you know, is it pool? is it made of lawn? Like, is it uh, a no, lawn? No, it's actually clay. Oh, it's clay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's a standard size, Olympic size tennis uh, court wow. in my backyard. Afterwards, you play a pickup game of basketball. Wow. And you jump in the swimming pool. Oh yeah, actually I have an ice rink in my house too. We play curling too. You know what? We do have a tennis court here. Oh really? Yeah. You're and talking about the Wii? Yeah. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. So tell me more about tennis. Well, first of all, this observance promotes the sport of tennis, which is a game in which two or four players strike a ball with rackets over a net stretched across the court. Now, um, again, I told you guys this is my sport back in the day. I usually join tournaments and amateur uh, competitions, right. you know, and I can say that this is an amazing sport to learn and play. And just like, I, I would say, just like most sports, you know, the phrase, it's easier to learn but hard to master. That's, yeah, I like it. It's, it's like, uh, anyone can join, right? But it takes a real talent to go to the top tier actually. Right, right. right. So, and I, I could l literally say that uh, tennis, uh, or that phrase, uh, actually is perfectly applied to tennis too. Really a lot. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, uh -huh. uh, Jared, in terms of like a tournament, like you know how curling is typically played like in the winter Olympics. Mm -hmm. Do you know any of the uh, more, more prestigious tennis tournaments? Not on, oh, well, yeah. First of all, the tournaments are not based on season because yeah. uh, tennis is an all year sport, you it's know, like, like a all tour, season. Right? Yeah, uh -huh. but I know Wimbledon is one. Wimbledon is the biggest one, biggest basically. One. Yeah. Uh, we have one here in the US called US Open. US Open, yes. There's a uh, Australian Open. Oh, Australian Open. French uh, Open, yeah. French Open, yes. Uh -huh. And what's, what's, um, it's kind of like a video game actually when you're joining those uh, big competitions yeah. because they have different kinds of, uh, of courts. And those courts, uh, Grass, yeah, I mean the ball reacts differently on yes. each court. Like play court, uh, you would expect balls to be slower. Yes. Um, and has more effect on the spin. Yes. So if, if someone tried to drop the uh, you know drop the ball in front of the net, it's it will be really hard to catch it. Um, for Wimbledon, uh, which is the original, the big the biggest the big uh, tournament of all tennis, you know, it's made of grass. So the top spin, well, I don't want to make it complicated. Anyways, the the the, the, the really loves yeah, the, the top spin will be significantly faster uh, when it bounces on the grass. And then of course we have the hard courts like U.S. Open. Uh, I think what is I'm, that? Is this like cement or something? It's 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 a uh, uh, rubber paint. Oh, rubber. Yeah. Okay, paint. It's yeah. Uh -huh. But it's 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 what they call a hard court because it's obviously it's the hardest right. uh, of all the courts. And then um, in our country we do have. Uh, since we don't have clay in there, we have what we call a shell port, which are made of shells. Yeah. Like seashells? Yes. Wow. Like uh, ground ones. Not, 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 um, I mean, I guess there are also like uh, whole shells, you know, but there are also some that are um, not, not pulverized. It seems like a little bit light on huh? ground. Yeah, but it's annoying because sometimes it's not even and the ball's gonna hit a, oh, a shell so and it's gonna bounce uh, on a funny way. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Hey, so, who's one of your favorites, uh, favorite uh, tennis players? Oh, I do have a lot of uh, favorite tennis players. My current favorite tennis player right now is uh, uh, 
what's his name? Oh, oh now, now I forgot. My, my, oh, my all-time favorite is Leighton, uh, Leighton. Is that how you pronounce his name? Leighton Hewitt. Yeah, he's Australian. I don't know. Yeah. yeah how about like the legends? Like, oh, at, well, yeah. well, yeah, of I, course, I it's a given, you know. But um, yeah. uh, for, Macaroon, John Macaroon. not a big fan, just because he <laughs> he likes to, you know, like uh, to to make a scene every time, you know. And for me, when you say sports, you gotta you gotta sports be like, respectful, yeah. you know. And I understand people, uh, players are getting frustrated, you know, but. For him personally, I think it's a habit of his. You yeah, know? I know, I know. Just, just so people will kind of talk about, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. talk talk about his name. And yeah. stuff. But anyways, uh, Andrew Roddick. Uh, uh, who else? Uh, Pete Sampras, obviously. Sampras. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Andre Agassi. Yeah. So like. Who's that one guy? Uh, uh, Andy Murray too, uh, and he 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 plays soccer too. Is it so it's like, who? Oh yeah, Novak, Novak Djokovic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I was playing out his name because I was thinking about another basketball player. That's good, don't you? Uh, yeah. That's I, I forgot his name, but I, I was gonna say that he's my current favorite tennis player. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. a he's, he's a like, funny guy, very friendly. Uh, as far as you know, like uh, when when you see him in tournaments, uh, of course uh, you have Roger Federer. Oh, Roger Federer. Yeah. yeah. I forgot about him. And then uh, Nadal. The Williams uh, sisters. The Williams sisters, especially Serena Williams. Uh, she's still playing. Can you imagine? Yeah, yeah. She hasn't retired yet. No, she's like what? Three, four, three, 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 a lot. Three, a, a lot of uh, other tennis players that started the same time as her were you know, retired for a long time already. You I know? know. Another uh, female tennis player. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know anymore. This one is there's an up and coming one. She's really young. Well, uh, there's it's the lot of tennis players. It's really fun to watch. Actually. Yeah, there, there's a Hawaiian tennis player, female tennis player yeah, that, that beat um, Serena Williams in one of the you know like whatever Naomi games. Something? Her name's like Naomi. Actually. Yeah. Uh huh. I think so too. But she's like Japanese. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. So yeah, I mean. I guess yeah. There's a lot of there's information lot. Uh, I was able to share with you guys because you know tennis is just my, my, my. Uh... When how did it start? How did, uh, how did it start? Oh. You know, like soccer, right? It was like uh, English sports. That's true. Like, American football is American. Like tennis. What would you attribute tennis to? That's true. Uh, well, according to historians, tennis was first played in France hmm. in the 12th century. So if you think about it, it's older than the uh, first. Um, sport that we talked about, which is curling, yeah. 1500s to 12th, 12th century. So um, like yes. Yeah. Since that time, tennis has always been a game where a ball is hit back and forth. Right. Okay. Um, the thing though is, there's there's gonna be in any kinds of sports, there's gonna be a major revision, major revisions with or, S. Or like uh, we call it offshoots. Like remember last week we talked about that one sport where they would hit the tennis racket backwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See. Oh, but yeah, but that's a different kind of sport. But um, the essence. It, it, it takes, yeah, it's like an essence of racket and a ball. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the essence of how you play it uh, remained the same up until today, which is hitting the ball back and forth. Uh, Despite a lot of major changes, we're talking about the changes. tennis rackets. They started from uh, from from wooden ones. Ooh. Now they're made of uh, aluminum, you know, yeah, or more graphite. More lighter. Yes, and then um, you know, uh, there's a video also on YouTube that I saw about the evolution of tennis, where the first players are actually wearing formal attire, like they're they're wearing formal attire. Uh, women are playing tennis with their you know, like the, the gowns. It is, it is a sophisticated, classy sport. So and, yeah. <laughs> so, and then the way they hit the ball is they hit them up. You know, oh. they hit them up. They still make it bounce. But, uh, you know, the first uh, people playing sports or uh, tennis, uh, they were not really running compared to what you're seeing on the TV now. So, I think the more sophisticated version of tennis would be badminton. Sophisticated? Yeah, it's more sophisticated. It has a little shutter conk and you just. You're hitting up, you're not hitting down. Well, you can't hit down. Well, you, you can hit down. Yeah, uh, I, I think you I can think smash it. I always associate badminton as a more fancier version of tennis. Really? Because the little shuttlecock, little, little, you know. I, I, I don't know. Well, I, I tr I, believe I, it or not, I also played badminton uh, competitively, and it's I would say it's more tiring than tennis, just because you know the court is more. smaller. You're looking out more. Well, yeah, that, that's one. But the court is smaller. Um, but there's no, uh, compared to tennis, you have a little bit of time to kind of compose yourself when you yeah, hit the ball yeah. over to your opponent, right? For badminton, though, when you hit the, 
the you have the brain to receive. What, what do you call that thing? The shuttlecock. Uh, shuttlecock. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you when you hit that to your uh, oh, opponent, yeah. you have to be ready right away. It's like it's because you can't make the the shuttlecock uh, bounce. Ah, oh, yes, that's true. It is tennis, right? You have the bounce, so you have time to set up yeah. and strike. Yeah, you can return the ball uh, with one bounce or no bounce. It's it's right. okay. Uh, 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 my, uh, minus the serve, obviously, but. Yeah, but for the badminton, no, no. Really? Once the shallow car uh, touched the ground, it's your opponent or whoever, you know, was the last person to hit it gets the point. So, yeah, tennis, guys. Uh, we're doing the Wii. Yeah, you can't play, you can always play on video games. You can watch right. tennis. Right, uh huh. So, yeah, we're doing the Wii tennis here once in a while, Wii Sports, and I uh, hope you guys are liking that. <laughs> Undisputed champion. No, yeah, Joe is. <laughs> All right, so once after you guys get tired of playing any of these sports, oh, you might want to go get, get some hungry. third banana observance. Bread. Banana, banana bread. bread. National banana bread. Who loves... I love banana bread. I know uh, we have a friend who loves banana bread too, and uh, their uh, staff makes one of the best banana breads I've tried. You know, I want to see. I want to see banana bread shaped like a banana. Uh, I'm not sure. Is it gonna work? I don't know. I guess you just have to shape it. You yeah, bake just, it, just get it mold, and then mold it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so. that'd be so cool. Hey, that's my idea. No, no one copy it. <laughs> I can make a banana mold where you can make banana bread. But you have to make it look like a banana too, not just the shape. Like you have to make it uh, more yellow then, because you know. So I just glaze it with blood, butter. Uh, I don't know. If okay, I mean, I'll not put, a good idea okay, about, <laughs> to I'll glaze put, it with butter. Okay, how about some mustard? Then? Uh, okay, now let's get it worse. <laughs> So, yeah, banana bread is really sweet, it's really tasty. You can eat by yourself, it's classic. Mm -hmm. Classified yeah. as a quick bread, right? Um, because it has a baking powder but no yeast. Uh, it is more similar to cake, uh, specifically uh, a tea cake, you know, uh, than it is to the bread because it usually contains a large amount of sugar. Um, it likely was given the name bread because it is sliced and often buttered, awesome. unlike, yeah, unlike cake. Not just not don't put too much which is usually frosted you know for the cake right right um, bananas first arrived in the US in the 1870s I didn't know that I, I thought it was like more longer <laughs> I know right now now we keep on calling but or you know we keep on talking about banana bread I'm starting to crave for banana bread I hope I can get one for today well you know the thing is will I get one for bread, today right? like a typical banana bread uh, I'm like not too keen about but when you see that picture right I have different nuts different flavors right it's much more better I banana know banana bread by itself is so plain I'm like I don't know and you don't have to finish the whole what loaf well it's not no, loaf no, no. Use, the whole for sure. yeah exactly just get a slice you know Ooh, but look at this picture I kind of like it like, you have that little nice almond flakes on top mm -hmm. the whole crunch with the side bread you have this raisin other nuts more yeah sweetness to it. Wow. Oh, yeah. it's, it's really about customizing to your liking. And, wow, oh, okay. See, when you look at the picture, right? You see how the inside is more wider than the outside? Mm, of dark. course, yeah. Uh -huh. It's just a different texture. Yes, yeah, different texture. Yes, yeah, different texture. Yeah, it's different texture. It, it, it looks like playing the ad, right? It's all blue cheese. Yeah, yeah uh huh. Well, tell you what. Uh, going back to bananas, uh -huh. they are now the most eaten fruit in the United States. I thought it was apple. But I guess bananas are are on the on that same level. I, I think bananas are easier because one. Oh, and another thing is they they go they get bad fast. You know, bananas. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course. So uh, if ever you would wanna eat them right away, compared to apple where it could last longer if you put them in the fridge. Yeah, you yeah. know. Uh, bana anyways, going back to the actual bread, the banana bread, uh -huh. uh, they began appearing in the 1930s during the Great Depression. So it took around, what, 50 years? No, it's 60 years from the introduction of banana to the United States in 1870. For the... 60 years later in the... Introducing the banana bread. During the Great Depression. Right? Yes. Uh, two factors uh, converged at this time to bring bring it about and then expand its popularity. You know, as times were hard, many people tried to save as much uh, food as possible from going to waste. Um, anyways, today, banana bread is now considered to be one of the many amazing food ever made. Yes. I kind of want banana. I agree now. 
I mean, I agree to Is it, and now I want it to here? become. <laughs> we should order some. We, uh, <laughs> Is there a bakery we, around we, here? We, you know what? I, uh, I prefer homemade banana bread. Yeah. I don't know why, for some reason. I, it, it's probably... It's warmer. It's out of the oven. It could be that, you know, but it's just... Uh, maybe because when you're when it's homemade, you don't really pay for it, <laughs> so it, you do. It, you are it paying tastes better. For it. No, I mean like you pay for the ingredients. <laughs> that's true, but if I'm not the one baking it, you're, you're paying for the gas bill. I guess. <laughs> you're, oh, just because you're not doing it makes it much better. Yes, you, you're, you're just, like being, you're just like being spoiled. Someone uh, bake me a banana bread, please, and uh, you know. <laughs> so let me know so I can pick it up. Don't don't spoil them. Okay. <laughs> don't spoil them. Next up. Oh, in history. Today is history you now. Yes. Third. What happened on 23rd? Yeah. Uh, one and only right now in 1954. That's what? 20 years after the banana bread? <laughs> wow, it's all connected. I just I just noticed. Also, banana bread causes polio? No, it didn't. <laughs> no. But How is it this, connected then? This, this, well, this happened 20 years after. That's not really connected. The Great Depression. That's not, they're, that's no, they're not. <laughs> they're kind of. Uh, the only thing that's connected is shared on the same day. Okay, that's good. Yeah, no, that's it. So what do we have for today? In 1954, uh, children uh, received first polio vaccine mm -hmm. in the U.S. Okay, um, a group of children in uh, Arsenal Elementary Elementary School in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, yes. received the first injections of the new polio vaccine developed by Dr. Jonas Salk. Polio a time basically like um, it's the bottom half of your body is able to move your muscles working like that. So, Still to this day, right? There's some countries that are not uh, vaccinated with uh, polio, right? Like in, uh, so through this day? Oh, yeah, it's so, like, kind of sad. Because like, some like, uh, groups are like, um, they do not vaccinate, right? So oh. these kids that normally could have walked, right? Because polio, they you know, make their uh, legs and they stand. And you see these kids just like, walk on their hands. It's really sad. To this day, we have the uh, polio vaccination. And I don't know, it's just people, they're like, Oh, that's yeah. yeah, that's really unfortunate, you know. Yeah. Um, considering that uh, the first vaccine here in uh, the U.S. or I guess in uh, Pittsburgh happened in 1954, so you would assume that it would be as available as as, uh, as for the rest of the world, but so, uh, or it might be available, but they declined to. It's just more well, like. Yeah. Oh, so the polio virus, right? Basically, it affects the nerve cell the muscle. You know, the muscle just like deteriorates, uh, and you have no muscle to lift yourself up, right? Right. You can't really. You're not able to walk. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's what the polio does. And we, we, you know, uh, uh, they call it the most well-known figure that had polio. I, I know one of the presidents. Yes. Uh, so one more thing. Uh, FDR, FDR did have it, did you have know, it, so, yeah. um, but I guess they were saying uh, it's not as devastating as the plague or influenza, Right. but it's still, you know, it's, it's still something, because uh, the polio, right, polio virus is more like, it's just one virus, well, when you have like plague or influenza, right, it can, it can change its uh, strain, strain. Yeah, okay, it's like the, the coronavirus, right, mm -hmm. you have strains, that's what you're keeping in the news right now. So polio, it's uh, it's almost eradicated. Like there's some whole that country, the little country that we think it out, like uh -huh. uh, ideology is wrong. Right. But yeah. I mean, I don't have, uh, I don't know that much information about it, but from from uh, the uh, research that I found, uh -huh. it's attacking the nerve cells. Right. Yeah. 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 It and, the nerve cells. And sometimes the central nervous system. So, so like you want to move your body, right? You need your nervous system to move it, right? If your nervous system yeah. is damaged, you can't really communicate to your legs. Like, hey, move this your legs, right? And if you're not using your so legs, so it, it deteriorates the muscle. Oh, the muscle. that's why right. FDR wasn't able to walk. Oh, but but then, again, but then again, looking at the bright side, he became um, a president. You know, that is true. He had polio before he became president. Exactly. Oh well, yeah. But well, I'm saying, you know, he, he didn't, didn't give he up didn't, in life. No, exactly. No. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so uh, it's still good. Uh, again, uh, a little bit unfortunate though what Joe yes. was saying that yeah. a lot of people are still misinformed and not, uh, what do you call this, not, not getting vaccinated just because they don't Ideology. believe in it. Yeah, yeah. so. Yeah. These poor children, they, have, they don't know any better, right? Like for me, we were vaccinated, I was vaccinated since I was 
like a child, man. Like, I did too. Great yeah. Yeah. It's devastating. You know what I haven't gotten though? Uh, a little bit off topic, uh, which I got vaccinated already. Uh, which? Chicken pox. I never had chicken pox there. And they, it, they said it might be dangerous for me because I might get Dude, it when I'm old. You might get shingles. You talk about this, guys. Remember, yeah. So <laughs> shingles are the adult form of chicken pox. You never get yourself vaccinated. But I, well, no, but but I think it's because I got vaccinated, so I never got it. Okay, that's good. So well, well, even when I was young. But people are saying that you should get it at least once in your life. Yes. Absolutely. Have you gotten it? Have, have you gotten yeah, it? I had when I was like around six. Was like oh two. no! Now I'm getting scared because I never got it. But you're vaccinated. I am. I am. Yeah. Why are you vaccinated? Because I mean, like you have it as an adult, right? It doesn't. Never been vaccinated. Yeah, but it doesn't sound uh, usual to skip. Uh, you know, getting a chicken box in your life. Yes. So if ever, that means I haven't skipped it yet. It's just not my time, and I'm probably gonna get it. I'm an adult, and they're but saying you're it's... vaccinated. Uh, you if you're vaccinated, you're protected. But it's not 100 percent, right? It's nothing 100 percent, but it's exactly. really high. Percent okay, there you go for protection. So you're saying nothing to worry about? Not really. Okay. I let you like. Running to chicken pox and pissing me. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna do that, Joe? Uh, I don't know, Joe. You do stuff that I'm questioning every day. <laughs> okay, moving on. Anyway, moving on. notable figure born today. We have Victor Fleming, 1889. Right. Uh, his name should sound familiar because he directed some of the uh, greatest movies, uh, I would say, of all time. Uh, you know? 007, James Bond. Did he? I don't know. Okay, that's Ian Fleming. Oh, okay. Wait, <laughs> but, but is, is Ian Fleming uh, related so. to Victor Fleming? No, no? So. okay. But uh, the two uh, most notable movies that he directed is The Wizard of Oz. Yes. And then The Gun with the Wind. Gone with the Wind. Um, both black and white movies, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Wizard of Oz. We just watched Wiz Wizard of Oz here before when we were, you know, when, back when remember. we were open. I'm trying to remember who was. It was like a love story. Right. Yeah, it was a love story. Was it odd? It was also a love story. It was a love between friends. It's more of a... No, it's more of a coming to age. It's more... Well, yeah. It, it's more of a fantasy-based... Adventure, or, yeah. finding yourself. Like Narnia, you know? Because like... In, I, I kind of compare Wizard of Oz with Narnia because the, these kids, uh, right? The Cowardly Lion. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying, like these kids are having some uh, problems in their lives, they and they, they had an ex escape. Uh, Narnia, they went to the the wardrobe, you know, and was able to uh, prove prove their uh, their their uh, how do you say it? Uh, prove their personality or their character by saving Narnia, you know. And then when they got home, they became confident that hey, right. you know, any problems here in, in the real world, I guess we can handle it. So, like, these fantastical, uh, fantastical worlds that they created, right? Mm -hmm. like, where they self -reflect. And, yeah, that helps them build their character or their... Uh... So, I have a question for you guys. What is the, what's the little girl with the Oz name and what's her uh, dog's name and where does she want to go back home to get a comment for me? Yeah, there you go. And while you're at it, you can also name your favorite character the Wizard of Oz. Yep. Or uh, Gone with the Wind, if you have See the, if you saw that movie, I don't think I saw that movie yet. I saw it, but I forgot about it. I, I just know that Gone with the Wind is a very famous movie, you know? Who's my favorite character in The Wizard of Oz? Who? Michael Jackson. He's there? The Wiz. Remember he did his own version of Wizard of Oz? Oh, yeah. Did, I, well, it's not the one it's directed original, by I know, Victor Plyer. Yeah. Like, You're confusing, though. It's <laughs> interesting, I'm saying it, The Wizard of Oz is so uh, cultural, culturally impacting, right? Right. A lot of people want it. Take away call inspiration from people. Mm hmm. Like Jack, you need to win. Right. I think we watched it once. Right? We did here. Yeah, we yeah. Did, yeah. Not the gun with the win. I don't think it's uh, age appropriate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, what? Plays of the week. Where are we going? We're going to Kosovo. Kosovo. All right, Kosovo, right there. And I kind of just, you know, click the next slide because I need to make sure it's what the country like, uh, is or the place like is. What do you call it? Eastern Europe. Uh huh. Near Russia, that area, the Ukraine area. Kosovo. Kosovo. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know me. My uh, episode uh, talks about the uh, national symbols. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they don't have any national animal. So, oh. yes, all I could find uh, would be the national flower, national mm -hmm. tree. Of course, they do have a flag and uh, their uh, national uh, motto. 
Okay, so let's talk about the flower first. It's called the uh, Kosovo peonies. peonies. Mm -hmm. So the red peonies represent the blood of thousands of warriors who died in the Battle of uh, Kosovo in June 1389. That's a long time. Yes. Uh, so in some cases, it is a symbol of remembrance. Mm -hmm. you know. uh, in the language of uh, flower, peony has a meaning of shame. Uh, this image comes from a myth that a wicked nymphs hide in the petals of a peony. So, wicked nymphs, it's kind of like... Not, not really shame, more like shyness. It's kind of like fairies. Yes. Well, you're ashamed, you want to show yourself. Yeah, you're ashamed, yeah. Okay, so that's the national flower. Uh, national tree, we have the uh, European beach. <laughs> not, the, not the ocean beach. Not the ocean beach, but B-E-E-C-H. Uh, it is a strikingly beautiful tree native to Europe, uh, which has been planted widely in New England, America. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it, its leaves turn reddish uh, coppery bronze in fall and tend to persi uh, persist uh, throughout the winter. Uh, its low slung branches often droop to the ground and then its bark is smooth gray and the trunk resembles an elephant's uh, foot. Right. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so it's so weird, like you say, how the low, the low sun branches, right? It droops into the ground. So you might mistake it as like a huge, uh, a huge uh, 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 bush. Oh, you're okay. A tree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But instead of you uh, thinking that those branches are uh, are attached to the ground, they're actually right. drooping down. Yeah, you're drooping ground. down. Then you walk towards a bush, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. How come there's an elephant here? <laughs> elephant foot here. And then we have the uh, the flag. Uh, just wanna show you guys the flag, but I'm pretty sure Liz already showed you the flag. I uh, just wanna you know do a quick recap if ever. Uh, the flag of Kosovo shows six white stars in an arc uh, above the golden map of the country of the place on a blue field. The stars symbolize Kosovo's six major ethnic groups. Right, it's a different kind of like cultures mm -hmm. together in one flag. That's cool. They they each represent one star. Same thing with ours too. We have 50 stars, 50 states. Mm -hmm. yeah. Symbolism. And then um, they have the uh, the motto called, or uh, you know, it says, honor, duty, homeland. So just something quick that you might want to remember. And that is it for our uh, place of the week. Moving on to our stuff of the day. Letter F. F. Can you think of an animal that starts with letter F? Falcon. Uh, okay, that's a good one. Uh, uh, flamingo. Finch. Finch. Yeah. Finch! <laughs> okay, there we go. I was gonna say, it's really close. It's also a bird. Our animal of the day, it's a bird. It starts with letter F. Fox. Fox is not a bird. Fish. Oh my gosh, you already just said fish. <laughs> Obviously, it's not a bird. Flying fish? <laughs> oh, you're talking about birds? Okay. So, bird, flamingo, falcon. Um, well, you already said it, Finch, right there. We got it on the picture. I can't think of What is a finch? Finches are tiny birds, so it can be so easy to overlook them. Right. Uh, however, these little beauties are among the uh, most popular and widely kept types of pet birds in the world. Uh, so it's safe to say that many prefer them uh, to larger bird species such as uh, parrots or parakeets. Uh, but again, of course, it all comes down to the person's preference. Right. You know? Uh, finches are social birds, and for uh, this reason, it is normally recommended that they are kept in pairs or small flocks. We don't want to keep them by themselves alone. Exactly, um, because what happens if, if you like just have one one of this as pet? Uh -huh. uh, they get you know they get unhealthy, generally right, unhealthy. Right, right. You know, they get sad, and even though you're there to you know kind of uh, play with them, yeah, it's. Uh, totally different species, so uh, you know they're more used to be uh, hanging out with their own kind. Because they have their own languages, so mm -hmm. I'm sorry if I understand better than people. Yeah, even though we give them food, shelter, stuff like that, just to survive, but not to live. Socialize. You know? Yeah. yeah live. There you go. And it, it's really important to birds, uh, especially for the social animals, because it also keeps them healthy. You know. Um, next would be the foxglove. Purple. The name Foxglove was first recorded in the year 1542 by uh, Leonhard Fuchs, which is, uh, well, I think it's, well, because it's German. It's, okay, Fuchs. For the German word, Fox. There you go. 
Uh, foxglove are native to Europe, uh, the Mediterranean region, and the Canary Islands. And several species are cultivated for their attractive flower spikes. I think it's really... It's, it's pretty. Yeah. I'm not really a flower person, but I can appreciate uh, flowers that look, uh, you know, looks cool, good. Kind of look like a bellflower. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. Facing down. Fox gloves thrive in acidic soils, in partial sunlight, to deep shade in a range of habitats, including uh, open woods, woodland clearings, moorland, um, heath margins, sea cliffs, uh, well, you know, rocky mountain slopes, and hedge banks. I mean, you name it. So places where typical normal flowers would be. Exactly. Yeah. So that's our plan of the day. Next, our musical art of the day. And uh, again, uh, I said we're going to be talking about um, either the artist or the, their Song single, you know, artists. not just the album anymore. Yeah. Letter F. You know that song? No. No. No? Ah. Oh. It is, right. is sung by an artist sorry about F. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, the artists <laughs> also happen to start with letter F, but the focus of the musical art of the day is the song. Fly, Fly Me to, to the, the moon. moon. I love that song. Is it like a... That's a perfect song for NASA. It's a perfect song for NASA or space robots. Right. Fly Me to the Moon. Space robots. Transformers? Neon There's... Genesis. Oh. Well, that's, Transform... That's ending song. Oh, you're yeah, right, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just remembered. Well... Yeah. Come on, you're, you're uh, what do you call this? Uh, putting some anime in here. <laughs> I was talking about what? Transformers. It's a, it's a good sh uh, show. It's a good show. It's a good show. Well, um, anyways, back to the song. Uh -huh. It was originally titled In Other Words. It was part of the lyrics. That's part of the lyrics. Words, something like that. Is a song written by 1954, or written in 1954 by Bart Howard. So he's a lyricist. He is, yeah, uh, but he wasn't he the one to, who performed yeah, it. He gave it to Frank Sinatra to sing. Yes, yes. Uh, if you notice, uh, we got Frank Sinatra in the picture. Uh, we'll talk about more of his version. But before that, I want to mention that it was Kay Ballard who actually made the first recording. Wow. Before. So it's a very person. She was, it was a she who uh, sung up the song first. Mm hmm. And then, you know how songs are like, especially famous songs, uh, there's going to be the first person who would sing rendition, it. Rendition, like, they have different renditions. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, uh, and then after that, uh, you know, Frank Sinatra's version. Now, uh, about Frank Sinatra's version, the uh, 1964 recording became closely associated with NASA's Apollo space program. You know, um, a copy of the song was played on a Sony TC50 portable cassette player on the Apollo 10 mission, which orbited the moon. <laughs> It's pretty cool. That makes sense. Like, what, you're, you're flying to the moon, you gotta get a song that's appropriate to flying exactly. to the moon. There's exactly. There's another song that got associated with space uh, for me. Uh, the, uh, have you seen the movie Armageddon? Yes. And they sang the Living on a Jet Plane part before they launch. Yes. So that's kind of like that. <laughs> John Denver? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ridiculous. Uh, the song's association with Apollo 11 was. Um, Reprised many years later when uh, Diana Krall sang it at the mission's 40th um, anniversary commemoration ceremony, uh, and also for Mission Commander Neil Armstrong's memorial service in 2012. So it actually covered two Apollo missions, 10 and 11. Right. Just want to make that sure or clear. Additionally, the Sinatra version was also used in the 2000 NASA-related NASA fictional film Space, Space Cowboy. This song is very famous, popular. Very That's all I can say, and I like it. It's a good song too. Yes. All right. Now going to moving on to our word of the day, we have fraction. Fraction. How? What's are a fraction? You, are you teaching this in one of your sessions? No? Eventually we will. Okay. Because right. like when you relate to decimal, it's always a fraction. Okay. There we you go. Convert, you convert decimal to fractions. What's the What's the difference between a fraction and a decim decimal? The period and a line. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if we're gonna look at the definition of the fraction, first of all, let me spell it for you. It's F R A C T I O N. Yeah. Fraction. fraction. It is a noun, uh, and it means a small or tiny part, or amount, or proportion of something. So how about this? Yeah. I'm taking uh, half of your food. What's a fraction for that? 
it's a half. One half. One over. One over two. Or two over four. Two over four. Or three over six. Three it over depends. Six. Yeah. This is half. So we convert one half, right? One over two, one half. Mm -hmm. so that's what will be that. What will be percentage? That will be 0.5. Yeah. Or 50%. 50 50%. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, when, when nowadays, when it comes to fraction, right? We're usually uh, dividing stuff. Like pizza, right? You mm -hmm. divide equally, you have fractions. I want one six, one fifth of pizza. Right. Uh, another time I see a fraction is when uh, you get gas. Okay. Other than that, I, I don't see fraction that much. Fraction is usually for cooking. That's true. Measurement. Yeah. I mean, Measurement, you know, yeah, when, yeah cooking. Uh, they're doing the you know one half one one half cup. One half cup. Uh, three fourths. Uh, what do you call this? Like, uh, cups of something or another. Because the keyword here is proportion. Right. Uh huh. Right. So sometimes like you want to measure accurately for like uh, liquids, right? Mm -hmm. you use milliliters, gallons, or whatever, right? Yeah. Sometimes the recipe calls for half of this in proportion to the other ingredients. Right. Uh huh. Right. So there you go. That's our word of the day. Mm -hmm. Now, last part, our tech trivia. We're back to tech trivia. It's also letter F. Ah, so blue. It's so blue. Who's that guy? Is that Bill Gates? No. <laughs> <laughs> but it has something to do with tech too. Oh, you know? really? Uh, Facebook. Uh -huh. His name is Mark Facebook. Zuckerberg. Oh, it's not Mark Facebook? Oh, I'm no. calling him Mark Facebook. No, it's not. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so our tech trivia today, uh, Facebook background color is blue. And there's a reason behind it. I mean, Why? you know, a lot of... A lot of these tech companies are have a reason behind their, uh, you know, background not, color, logo color. Why not red? Why not green? It's because Mark Zuckerberg is colorblind to red and green. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh no. I mean, you know, you would say like, oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put red in my logo because it's aggressive. You know, yeah. I want people to pay attention. Or for green, Mark Zuckerberg, for, for green is like uh, nature. Yeah, for Mark. You notice like those vegetarians are just for like, eco, like eco. eco yeah, yeah, uh -huh. eco and. Uh, I think blue is also used for medical, or like let's say dental. You know, I think red is more because like uh, red cross, blood, whatever. Is more I guess it depends on what you're serving in the medical exactly. stuff, right? Blue, blue is more common. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So like when you go to dental places, it's blue because you don't want to, you don't want to uh, get nervous or anxious true, that oh true, I'm gonna true. pull my pull out. Uh, I mean my pull out, my pull out my tooth, tooth out. out. Yeah, yeah. So. Anyways, uh, why not blue or why blue and not some other colors? Uh, it's because um, Mark Zuckerberg, again, I, I mentioned already that he's colorblind to red and green. So therefore, uh, blue is the richest color for him. Uh, in an interview, he actually stated that. That's it. And he said, uh, blue is the richest color for me. So I can see all blue. So... Is that a sad thing? No, not really. No, I guess he's... Maybe, but there are classes where you... Uh... The thing though is I can't imagine Facebook logo with green or red because <laughs> I think it's it becomes so associated with the ba blue background already, so you know? It's like it's Facebook, right? There's a lot of B in it. B's for blue. There's an R, there's an G. Conspiracy time. I have another trivia that is not here about Facebook. Did you know before Facebook though? I just want to put it in there. It's called uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg's first project or idea was called Face Mash. Yeah, instead of Facebook. So, yeah, that's all. <laughs> so if it's face mash, then it's you know, there's no B anymore. So what's that? It doesn't uh, justify your. What's that book where it has instead of faces, you have names? Name what? The yellow pages. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> are, 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 is yellow pages still a thing right now? It's still. Really? It's still, like it's still, you still get a physical copy? You can. Yes. Oh. I haven't seen one for a long time now. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, it's not that common. Yeah, because every like I think it, they're getting a uh, how do you say modernized. They're, they're getting uh, thrown out by Yelp or other like Google app, uh, not Google ad. Well, Google besides ad. that, you can use it to uh, is it white pages? I forgot the difference between white pages. And but yellow pages are going online now too. Right, right. Yeah. So they, they do have the uh, catalog of all businesses and stuff yeah. directories. Anyways, guys, I'm, I'm, uh, we got some stuff heating up some food and it's making me hungry. So we're going to call it a day now Yay. for this episode. Uh, that's the end of it. That's hope, you like it. hope you learned something new. Don't forget to leave your thoughts about the topics we discussed in the comment section below. 
And as always, uh, see you next one. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.